creative editing with presets using the new white box feature that just was updated is our topic today on Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hello everyone, I'm really excited uh, because we're gonna show off the new white box update uh, that, that's gonna be inside the new release of Luminar Neo coming real soon. And what this is gonna enable us to do is we're gonna be able to see what the presets uh, were, what tools were used in the presets to create uh, a certain um, look. We had that feature in Luminar AI. They, were, they weren't they were positive we were gonna keep it in Neo. And then they listened and they brought it back. So let's dive right in on it. So here's a shot, and by the way, full disclosure, this is the original image, okay? So this was the original image of the um, of the, of the shot itself, and I will admit, it's blown out. It was a horrible, which was shot something like 15 years ago. Um, broad daylight, it just wasn't a great shot. To save it, I had to do a lot of cropping this, and then by converting it to a black and white, it's gonna make it look much better. So let me show you how I did this. And one moment, let me just pause my, um, move my zoom. So if any of you start chatting, it doesn't keep popping up. Let's see, there it is. All right, there, all right, now I'm back. All right, so here we are with the image. And like I said, I, I love this image as a preset. So, or I'm sorry, as a black and white. And sure enough, for this photo, it's using AI technology. The preset here is looking at it thinking, yes, black and white will look good for this image. The experimental set. And then of course, easy portraits. So, you know, I could click on easy portraits, look at some of these here, but I'm gonna go over to my favorite uh, black and white. And as you know, Soulful is one of my favorite uh, presets for black and white. So I'm gonna click on that. And when I do, look, it does its thing. Now, here's the difference. I'm gonna click on edit. In fact, let me get the cursor modifier for it so you can see it. Now, here we are with up on the top toolbar. I clicked on edit. Now over here in this panel, I'm gonna click on edits and here it is. Everything that we, that, or all the tools that were used to create this preset are now visible. In the past, that, that wasn't the case. And the problem was this down here. On a raw file, we're not able to um, use develop raw because it was inside that preset. Now that it's open, I can come back down here, make a few adjustments. In fact, I'm going to take the black tones and just bring them in a bit. The whites I'm going to leave alone because this is all blown out. And yes, Carl, once we get the histogram back, we'll be able to use the histogram to fix a lot of this. But for now, I'm going to use the highlight slider and I'm going to bring it back. Look how it's recovering some of this. Now that I did that, notice I was on the base layer, or not the base layer, I was on the base tool. Now if I go all the way back to the top, that edit is carried all the way through. Now, if you notice something, by doing what I just did, now the eyes are kind of in shadow. Well, I can still add more tools and that's not gonna affect the, 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 the preset that we just created. And what I mean by that, it's not gonna affect it. It's not gonna erase what we just did here. So it is gonna affect the overall look, but it's not gonna erase all the tools that were added so let's come down here to portrait and with face AI, I'm going to put a little light into the face, not a whole lot because it already looks good, but her eyes, let's see what we could do to make those eyes just jump. The enhancer of course, Ooh, look at that. Let's remove some of the dark circles. Even though she's a young girl, there's dark circles under the eyes because it was lit under harsh light. 
And you can actually see where the light's coming down. So the shadows, which I call raccoon eyes, were, were there. All right, that looks good. And nope, I feel comfortable with everyone, everything else. But I am going to come back up here to develop again. And let's lift the shadows. So I'm going to do a global change. There we go. And what that means is I lifted the shadows for the entire image. Now I can come back in. And I'm going to paint the effect just on the area that I want. And in this case, it's her eyes. All right, let's see the effect. I'm using the visibility icon. There we go, to, to, to show it. All right, and let's just finish it off with a vignette. Choose the subject, which is her. And let's dial this back and the size. Good. And we're gonna come in here and let's feather it a little bit. And just to see exactly what I'm doing, I'll go to an extreme and here's the feather. Look at that. So we'll feather it here. And you know what though? I'm gonna move it over and up just a little bit. There we go, I like it right there. And I'm gonna bop just a little inner light into the scene. Now let's dial back the amount. Right about there. And there we have it. So we started with this. And then by using the preset as a base, we jumped into here. In fact, I'm gonna do one more thing because I like it, but you know what though? I just wanna pop it up just a little, there we go, just a little. And we're here. Now again, once again, notice the edits. We started, we started with that preset and all the tools that were used, we, we could see it, and then we added our own tools, all right? So, Carl, let's open it up for discussion. Okay, Phil has his hand up. All right, Phil. Yeah, Vanelli, you would have to, then you have to put the preset in first before using your own tools. Thank you. So if Phil, you use Phil, your own tools and then the preset, it would erase everything you did below it, right? You are awesome. All right. So what I love about this team, Phil knows the answer. Phil just that's Phil's polite way of saying, hey, Vanelli, you forgot to mention that if you were to apply the preset. And so thank <laughs> okay, you, Phil. You and, me. and here's the thing, by the way, you know, Carl, guess what I forgot to show you guys? Thank you, Phil, for bringing that up. Look at this. White box. Yeah, no, we already did the white box, but watch this. No, I'm joking with you. Uh, right down here. Bip. Let me zoom in. Look at that. Save this preset. Wow. Yep. So now we can save that. In fact, you know what? I am going to do it. We'll save it as our own preset. And there it is. And oh, Thomas was make, asking, oh man, is it going to, are we going to be able to save that preset without having to <laughs> rename it and go back out? Thomas, they heard you. They heard just you and the team did it. I'm going to call this Phil's favorite. <laughs> All right, so there's hard. Phil's favorite. Now, here's what's going to happen. If, let's say, Carl comes along and says, Vanelli, you know what? I really like that film grain better. And we apply the film grain, and what Phil is saying is this. Oh, okay, perfect. Here's a great example. I love everything about this except the film, except the film grain. The film, film grain. But now watch. If I go over and we do our edits, everything that we did has been replaced. So like Phil mentioned, since we're using, or since you apply a preset, it takes precedent and, and it's assuming you wanna start over. So that's what the preset did. So in this case here, I would just come down here to, there is film grain and Look at that. That's without film. Oh, look at that. So I'm going to erase. I'm going to reset the film grain, delete it, come down to the bottom. If I can make it to the bottom. And then 
save the preset as Benelli's favorite. Benelli's new favorite. There we have it. Now, I can still go back to Phil's. If I click on Phil's, his is going to appear. Uh, the one that we just did with Phil. Now, but keep in mind, but keep in mind, that mask that we did, it's going to save the mask also. So that, that's kind of a bad thing because on a new image, that mask is going to be in that location that we did for this image. All right. Thank you, Phil. Next, Carl. So the, that, that mask will not find the eyes. It's exactly. just going to stay there. Okay. Yeah. It's good so, so that's Carl. why, if, wanna, yeah, if you're, you so what you would do. You don't want to save a preset with a mask. Yes, yes. Yeah. So okay, what you would Carl. do is I would go back to the Phil's favorite, edit, and where, where did we do that? That was under uh, develop, right? That was under this develop right here that we used the mask. What, what I would do, say, if we had the on and off switch, I would just turn it off. But in this case here, if we went to, or I would just reset it, so, so I lost the eyes, right. and then resave it again, and then let the end user or yourself go back and add that little extra to it. All right? Thank uh, you. Thank you. All right. Next, Carl. Carl. Charles? A mute, Charles? Charles? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Vanelli, I'm, <clears throat> I'm still using AI because of the template situation. But what are we, in that uh, edit that you've just done, which was quite nice, what are we doing there? Is there anything we're doing there, rather, that we can't do in AI? Yeah, so as it stands right now, um, what we just did right here, yes, you could do it in AI, you could do it in Luminar 4, all right? So you, we could do what we just did. The difference is, um, I don't think, no, 4 didn't have face. So there's a lot, other than the tools, 4 didn't have face, but imagine this as a an image with power lines in it. Then you can't do that in AI. Or this image here, um, let's say I wanted to add her, her little brother or her sister not in this particular image, but in an image uh, that, that would be more conducive to where I could add another person, then we could do that with a new layer. And with the saved presets, unlike Luminar 4, where it saved each of the layer individually, now what it'll do is any really cool effects you put in, if we put the birds in, not the giraffe, if we put the birds in, <laughs> then from here, it'll save all of those layers as one and then when you hit that preset it'll rebuild everything we just what i just said and then you can start from there so that's the main difference between um luminar ai and then luminar neo all right all right okay pat go ahead and then we'll wrap up questions and go to ama oh, let me wait for ama okay what was that that was it all right awesome well, guys, thank you so much, and I hope this uh, pre this um, uh, the new white box update will be releasing real soon. You're gonna have a lot of fun with it because you're gonna fall in love with with presets again, mainly because you get to edit them and then, of course, save them as your own. All right. So again, thanks for joining us, and I'll see you at the next coffee break. Oh,